Hey everybody, this is a double whammy week. We get two tutorials all in one week. Um, now I'm using a rather bumpy rock, um, low on supply right now, simply because we have about six feet of snow over top of our stones. <laughs> Welcome to Northern Ontario. Uh, so this rock is bumpy, but you're not going to be able to tell that it's like that once we're done uh, with the way I'm doing it. So I'm using a compass and I'm just putting a, a dot right in where it looks to be sort of the center of my stone. And I'm going to use a compass to make two circles, one circle first, and then one that's a little bit bigger because this is going to be uh, used as a frame for our painting today. So if you've watched other tutorials of mine, I usually like to put a frame somewhere on my artwork. So it just kind of feels more like a piece of art to me. Uh, so you don't have to do this if you don't want to. Um, the best part about painting with me is that you can use your own ideas as much as you can use mine. So just have fun with it. This is just what I'm doing today. Now I've used a blue marker uh, to show you the lines because pencil you wouldn't have been able to see in the video. So I used a blue marker that way you can see where my circles are. Now I'm simply covering up my blue marker with gold paint. I use Spun Gold by Deco Art, and uh, I do use quite a few layers of it, so it, it ends up being quite bold by the time I'm done. Now because my rock is gray, I don't want it to make my colors dull, so I'm going to use a sponge and paint the inner circle white and let that dry, because that's going to be like a primer. And the only reason why I use the white is so that my colors stand out. Now what you can do is you can go on Pinterest and look up color palettes. I wanted to look up a spring color palette and I got this beautiful palette off of Pinterest. So this is what I could find in my paint supplies, which is close enough to that palette. And we're going to just work with those colors only. So it's really fun. You can choose whatever palette colors you want from Pinterest and then start blending those colors in together and you will not be sorry. So I'm putting all of the colors up to the camera for you with the with the numbers. You don't have to use the same colors as me. Um, you can choose whatever color palette you want. Uh, but this is just to give you an idea. Now I always use a little bit of white when I'm using each of these colors as well so that they blend in nicely. So I've got, I'm starting with the blue. It's a, a nice blue. I love this color. I will list the colors in the description of this tutorial for you. Uh, that way, if you do want to use the exact colors I'm using, they will be there for you. Now I've gone in with that dark blue and I'm going in with a little bit of white while it's still wet, while the blue is still wet. And I'm lightening that up and kind of blending it in with the white background a little bit. So it's not just a a bold blotch of blue. I want to make it kind of smooth. Now make sure you switch back and forth. Do not use the same sponge for for all of the colors. You want to use one sponge per color. And I usually have to keep running and washing them and coming back because I'm running out of sponges. <laughs> I need to get myself some more sponges. So I've used like the dark teal color here. Um, and then I used a little bit of white to blend it in that edge so it doesn't look too bold. Now I'm using a dark violet pansy, which is a gorgeous color, but I'm a huge fan of purple, so you can't go wrong if there's a shade of purple. I love it. So I'm going to go in with like a light plum color as well. And you just go in random areas of your little frame, your little framed in area. Um, and just keep adding white while it's still wet. Make sure you don't use the green sponge where the pink is because that will just make it look like, as some people refer to as mud, it blends the colors together and it does not look nice. So use separate sponges for every color. And I just keep adding a little bit of white so that I can kind of blend out the edges of the color so you can see the dark pink, I've blended it out to a lighter pink on the edges. And the purple, I'm going to blend that out to a lighter purple by adding some white. 
And see, I'm running out of sponges, so I'm using a giant sponge for this. I don't recommend using giant sponges because you have really no control of where that sponge is going to go. <laughs> so unless you're a pro, try and stick with smaller sponges, even makeup sponges. They work really great. Any kind of sponges are awesome. I, I usually end up cutting mine and and having like a little end on it so that I can have more contour. Um, but whatever works for you. You can also use paint brushes, blending brushes. I find with sponges though, it does give it a nice like air look, airbrushed look almost. Uh, if you blend it right, it looks really, really nice afterwards. So you'll see this after. I'm adding a little bit more plum. So there's only five colors, I believe. Six colors if you include the white. Um, but depending on the palette you choose, if you are sticking with this one, there's a small amount of colors. So just kind of blend them all in together. Leave some white in between to separate the colors a little bit or lighten them. And you can always go back once it's dry and fix little areas. But don't mess with it too much. This is just the background. This is like a sunset in the background. So when, when we paint over top of this sunset, anything that you thought was wrong with it is going to disappear. Any mistakes, they're just going to be gone. This is going to change so much. So once you're happy with the blending, it does take time and practice to get used to it but so worth it, so keep practicing with me, okay? And if you have any questions, message. I will try to get back to you as soon as I possibly can. Now, I'm going in with black, and now we're going to do a silhouette. So this is a silhouette of two dandelions uh, blowing in the wind, and they're going to be releasing a couple of their little seedlings or whatever you want to call them. And I'm a big fan of silhouettes, so this is what we're doing today. Although I do kind of add some gold to my silhouette, so it's not just a pure silhouette. Now, I've done two stalks or stems. Now I'm using my small round sponge to make two spongy dots there. I don't want them to be perfect circles. I just want them to be spongy black dots sitting there. We're going to work with that to make the dandelions. Now I'm going to do with my fine lining brush, which the tutorial will be in the description, uh, a couple of little leaves coming off that are hanging down. Now these are the dried out dandelions, so so the leaves aren't as big and... and uh, noticeable. They're more dried up by this time. So just bear with me. I'm not a realistic painter. <laughs> now I'm just lightly with my lining brush and some black paint throwing a couple lines just all the way around different lengths. Not too many. You don't want to over overdo it with them. You want it you want to be able to see them all. So I'm moving on to the next one really quick. But it's the same thing with as as I did with the first one. They're all different lengths. They don't all have to be the same thickness. Um, and then we're going to do like little pitchfork ends. That's the best way for me to describe it is like three pronged pitchfork at the end. And once again, just kind of wisp it on there. Don't be exact. Don't get nervous. Don't worry about how tiny the little pitchforks are. Just wisp it on there real quick. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's going to look beautiful when you're done. And just don't, don't make big blobs. Make sure you wipe off the paint so that you're not blobbing it on there because you can't really fix a silhouette very easily, especially with a blended background like we did. So just go easy and, and put on all those little pitchforks. Now, because... It looks like the wind is blowing to the left on my stone. I'm going to do a couple of stray um, seedlings or, or whatever they're called. Correct me. Just don't, uh, don't get mad at me for not knowing the terminology. 
Um, so I'm just going to do a couple of stray ones, different sizes. As it gets closer to the outside of the rock, I do them a little bit smaller, just so it looks like they're a little farther away. Really gentle. And depending on which way yours are blowing, if they're blowing to the right, put your little seedlings going to the right. There we go. Now back with the gold again. I do outline uh, the gold often. I want it to be nice and bold. So I, I do a couple of layers of the gold when I do it. And that's completely up to you. And depending on the type of gold that you use, you might only need one layer of it. But as you can see by any of my other tutorials, I'm a little bit obsessed with that gold. And... Uh, <laughs> I'm not sorry. Sorry, but I'm not sorry. So I'm just outlining it to make sure that we have that all framed in properly. And I'm going to take the darkest blue um, and I'm going to go around the outside uh, in between those two gold lines there. And that's what the frame color is going to be, is that darker blue color. You can choose whatever color you want. You can do a black frame if you prefer. Um, but I just do like two thicker layers with the paintbrush in between these gold lines and poof, magic, it's done. And you will see me outlining and fixing because I like it to look even. And uh, so the good part about this is that you can just keep fixing it until it looks as perfect as you feel comfortable with. Here I go outlining with the gold again. Also, I do like uh, lines on my frame and it kind of looks like a dial or like the outside ring of a coin. And it's just something that I have always done. They're in a lot of my mandalas or my mandalas and uh, I'm just comfortable with this frame. So you've seen it on other tutorials as well. You've, you've probably uh, gotten sick of it by now if you've seen a lot of my pictures. Uh, but this is just what I'm going to do. You do what you want. You don't have to put any lines in it. You don't have to do a frame if you don't want to. If you just want to paint this onto the stone just like this without a frame, it's up to you. Now I am going to go in uh, and do a little bit of fine gold touches in the dandelions as well. Up the stem, I want to kind of outline the leaf, um, the leaves, sorry, and all of those seedlings so that they have a little bit of gold. So it's not just a silhouette, but it's almost like a little sun-kissed silhouette as the sun's going down and there's a little bit of sun shining on our dandelions still. And you'll see that afterwards. It is hard to see the, the, the gold outlining on the dandelions at first, but once you seal it with resin, um, or seal it with whatever you're comfortable sealing with, um, the gold really does stand out. And I will leave my tutorial for resin um, in the description, as well as all the paint colors that I used, and all the information that you need to paint this, as well as my fine lining brush. See my dial? There, it's all done. And basically, it's just putting even amounts of lines I start at the top, bottom, left, right, and then I keep going in between all of those lines until I'm happy with the spaces between them. And then you have like a little dial, a little dial frame. And it's very like Aztec-y for some reason. I don't know. I just love it. Anyway, I am outlining my dandelions with a little bit of gold. Don't be picky with it. Just lightly brush little skips of gold along it just to kind of brighten up some of the parts so that you can really see them so that they stand out so that they've been kissed by the sun I guess you can say you you can't see it very well here I will bring it closer to you in a moment and I add a couple of dots with not only a paintbrush uh, this paintbrush I add dots in the center of the dandelions um, but I also use a dotting tool and define some more dots afterwards you can see the gold a little bit better now that I've held it up close to you. There we go. It's beautiful. 
You can also put glitter on the background once the blending part is dry um, and then do the dandelions over top of the glitter. That's also a nice touch as well if you use hologram or any other kind of glitter. Now the last step for me is I'm going to outline the dial in black paint just so it kind of makes it stand off the rock a little bit more. Once I resin this it does darken the rock but uh, you will be able to see that this stands off the rock a bit better just because of that black outline. And that's up to you. You don't have to do that either. So I have finished it. I'm going to let it dry a little bit before I resin it. But then I'm going to show you what it looks like with resin. And you will fall in love. I promise. So I'm just adding some dots there in the center. Just to kind of define that middle part a little bit. Make it look a little more busy. So it's not just black. Um, and it, it really makes a difference. So don't forget this part here. Um, the resin, it's up to you if you want to use it, but this is what I'm using, and it makes your rocks look like jewels when they're done, I promise you. So take a look at my resin tutorial. Here it is. <laughs> it's beautiful. Those colors are beautiful. Um, good luck with yours. I hope you really enjoyed this one. It's so pretty. Um, they're just so beautiful. So uh, share it with your friends and uh, come on to Facebook, Rachel's Rocks on Facebook, and I'm going to be having a contest very, very soon. Share my page, my channel, and hit the subscribe button. Once I have uh, 20,000 subscribers, I'm doing a contest. So I love you all, guys. Keep painting.